Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tech Geek webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Collimate Scrum, Agile, Pro Agile Project Management for Improved Efficiency, a case study. Our guest speaker today is Mr. Hemant Kumar Dugar, Senior Consultant, Projects at FundoLearning.com. Hemant is a motivated achiever with more than 15 years of significant progressive experience in IT, a practicing PM certified professional, having a sound base for core concepts in managing projects and processes at various knowledge areas. Hemant has extensive knowledge of managing projects using agile project management. Scrum is always his preferred PM framework and incorporating best out of XP and lean within Scrum framework is the key to his success. He has a strong hardcore technical base with more than seven years of hands-on technical development. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker, Mr. Heyman Dugar. Over to you, Mr. Dugar. Can you make me the presenter? Yeah, Mr. Duga, just a second. Hello. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yeah, Mr. Dugar, I'm able to hear you. Just a second. I'm able to see your screen. You just need to make me the presenter. Yeah, so uh, just wanted to confirm whether I am, uh, uh, whether everyone in the room is able to hear me and uh, see my screen. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Hello, am I audible? I just wanted a response so that I can start uh, today's yes, uh, webinar. Yes, Mr. Duga, you're yes, Mr. Duga, you're audible. There was some technical problem at my end. Uh, it has been fixed now. You can start the presentation. You're audible. Your I can show. I can see your screen. Okay, so uh, I'm starting now. Hello, everyone. Uh, today's 
Yeah, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I understand that uh, some of the attendees have been using Agile Scrum since long. Uh, some uh, of you just uh, started with Agile or Scrum, and some are planning to start uh, with the Agile. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Dugar. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Dugar. You need to be Pardon? a little louder. You need to be a little louder. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, to make uh, everyone on the same page, I will take uh, some fundamental concepts about Agile and Scrum initially, and then uh, we'll move on to the today's topic of collimating Scrum. So is it okay now, my voice? If you, could, if you can be a little louder. Okay. So uh, what is uh, Agile development? Uh, Agile development uh, is basically an umbrella of terms for several iterative and incremental development methodologies. Uh, so Agile uh, is a general term for uh, many popular methodologies like uh, Scrum, Kanban, Extreme Programming, Test Driven Development, Feature Driven Development and many such other uh, uh, models or methodologies. Now coming to the Agile Software Development. The Agile Software Development basically emphasize on our working software as the primary measure of progress. So, is an evolutionary, highly collaborative, disciplined, quality focused approach to software development. So, this actually uh, encourages uh, customers or stakeholders to prioritize their work or their wants based on business value and then uh, for every uh, requirement, uh, every set of requirement, there will be a time, predefined time allotted for that, say two week or four week. So thereby potentially shippable uh, working software is produced at regular intervals for review and post correction. Agile Manifesto. So while each of the Agile method is unique in its specific approach, they all share common vision and core values. These common vision and core values are individual and interactions are always preferred over processes and tools. This doesn't mean that processes and tools don't have value, but the preference will be more to the individuals and interactions. Working software over comprehensive documentation. So more uh, stress to the working software, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, because in Agile, customer will always, always be in touch with the team, so the customer collaboration is given preference over contract negotiation. So uh, responding to the change, fast change, uh, fast response to the changes is uh, another manifesto uh, point for the Agile. So uh, with all these uh, unique approaches, there are some principles behind uh, Agile manifesto. So some of the important principles are deliver working software frequently. Maybe uh, in a couple of weeks or in a month, that is basically a shorter time scale, on the shorter time scale. So this is one of the principles. Business people and developers must work together. So this is again important. Daily throughout the project. 
build projects around motivated individuals. Working software is the primary measure of progress. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. This is essential. So at any given point of time, uh, the management or the uh, stakeholder is able to view what amount remains. At regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective. So at regular uh, it, uh, intervals means uh, basically at the end of every iteration, uh, this uh, has to be uh, evaluated. Uh, how can we, we uh, or the team members will be more effective? Now coming to this scrum. Scrum is a agile method. Uh, Scrum is a simple management framework. So uh, at a lot of places you will find that Scrum has several processes, but believe me, it's just a framework. You have to set or the team has to set their own processes uh, to proceed within the agile framework. For incremental, so Scrum is a simple management framework for incremental product development using one of the more cross-functional and self-organizing teams. Scrum teams use called sprints. So uh, sprint word and iteration word is normally used interchangeably. Typically two weeks to four weeks long, they attempt to build a potential shippable product increment every iteration. So this is basically comes under the uh, principle so, uh, of Agile. Scrum teams are responsible for creating and adapting their processes within this framework. And Scrum provides a simple structure of roles, meetings, rules and artifacts. We have already seen the rules. I will introduce some of the uh, meetings, roles and artifacts. Before that, let's see, uh, let's have a factorial representation of working in uh, Scrum. So if you see uh, this particular portion where uh, this is basically the product owner's responsibility with the uh, stakeholder or the client to uh, put a stack of requirements in a proper priority that is known as project backlog. So this term will be used quite often project backlog. Then each of the item is selected from the project backlog for the prioritized work. Uh, you can say project backlog items every two weeks. Suppose our iteration is two weeks or sprint is, uh, sprint is of two weeks. So uh, the team selects how much print work or how much task they can complete in particular sprint. So that is known as sprint backlog. So all these are artifacts. This is a sprint of say two weeks, ten days and this is a daily work that is continuously being monitored, the progress within daily and within this sprint. And at the end of the sprint, a uh, testable or deliverable part of functionality of the product that committed by the team will be shipped. Before shipping, it will be demonstrated to the product so that proper functionality can be finalized and can be released. If any items is not uh, not proper, it will be put back into the project backlog so that it can come with the pri priority for the coming uh, sprints. So this is uh, basically the overview of uh, Scrum Agile uh, method. Let's have a uh, Scrum roles. Uh, product owner.
So product owner is basically uh, a key stakeholder and represents a uh, user or customer and is responsible for the requirements for the release. Scrum development and QA team. Development and QA team. So uh, although the team member should be cross-functional and should work in the development as well as testing portion, but there are times when you, you need to separate out these teams. In most of the cases, if your team size is bigger than seven members, uh, normally you uh, break it into two parts, uh, development team and QA team. And the important uh, role is of Scrum Master. The Scrum Master is responsible for making sure the team is as productive as possible. The Scrum Master does this by helping the team to use the Scrum processes properly and by removing all the hurdles and impediments that comes in the progress of the uh, sprint. It normally keeps protecting the team from outside uh, uh, environmental influences. So uh, these are the roles. Scrum artifacts. We have already seen product backlog, product backlog item, the individual item in the uh, product backlog, uh, also known as user story. This is a single uh, task that can be completed or that should be completed within one sprint. Then sprint backlog. This is basically all these user story for one sprint. That is uh, the sprint that is going on. Then sprint task. Individual uh, stories, user should, story should be broken further down to the individual task by the team. Uh, sprint burn down chart. This shows the progress within the sprint. How the sprint is progressing as for this test. This is the days. Two weeks, ten days. And this is the total hours for the sprint. Ideal situation, your progress should complete at the end of the sprint. Your uh, uh, sprint, all these user stories within the sprint. But if you see, it should be, in actual, it should go like this. So this is sprint burn down chart. You can get many examples over internet with a proper uh, uh, graph to understand it. Uh, but the basic concept is uh, on the uh, on one axis, uh, it is the number of hours remaining for the sprint, and on another, it is the number of days remaining. Then product and release burn down chart. This depicts the overall uh, product progress as well as the release progress. Uh, I have one question on my uh, window that what is sprint? So sprint is a predefined cycle where you have to start working you have to produce or you have to commit your work that you can complete within that span. If the sprint is finalized for the two weeks, the team has to commit the work for two weeks that the team can complete within two weeks. And then when, when one sprint completes, there is a start of another two weeks week sprint and the team again commits for the work for the uh, for another sprint now there are some uh, uh, scrum meetings although I have listed a uh, few uh, important and uh, necessary meetings there can be possibilities of other meetings also but these four are really important uh, every scrum should have these planning meeting where it has been uh, basically decided how much workload that can be taken in that particular sprint that is starting. 
then there is a daily stand up meeting you can say daily scrum where uh, progress for that particular day is discussed there should be a small meeting of around 15 minutes where each developer uh, respond on some uh, pre decided questions that uh, uh, how much work he completed in the previous day what all the work he need to complete in the current day what are the impediments and how is if any delay in its in his work what are the impediments so all these things will be discussed or actually reported to the other team members sprint review meeting uh, we also call it a stand up meeting because it is a very small meeting there is no time to sit normally team members uh, stand up around a table and then discuss their progress report their progress basically to other team members sprint review meeting where this is at the end of the sprint where all the shippable functionality is demonstrated to the product accepted by product or rejected by product so uh, this happens in the sprint review meeting all the accepted uh, accepted uh, accepted uh, functionalities will be released and not accepted things should go back to the product backlog sprint retrospective meeting retrospective meeting is basically to understand what went well what didn't well what didn't went well what should be improved and what is the lessons learned so this is the portion where the next sprint uh, where the lessons are learned will be recorded and uh, the efficiency or the productivity uh, hurdles will be uh, reported and then it should not happen in the next iteration uh, this is the basic purpose to continuously improve the uh, effectiveness of the scrum i have few questions in front of me that relate to basic from things so uh, mr dubo if uh, i take all these questions i will tweet from my uh, regular uh, from my uh, reason for this particular uh, webinar yeah mr dubo i will try to address some pardon uh, mr dubo sorry to interrupt you mr dubo will take up the questions uh, towards the end let's first finish the presentation and then we'll take okay. up the questions right okay okay, okay. all right thank you now scrum benefits uh, i will go uh, speedily with the benefits more business value delivered sooner so it is easily understandable delivered sooner because at every regular interval there will be a uh, shippable product releasable product uh, some functionality of the product so that uh, it can be uh, it can be valued by the customer better roi better visibility to team customer and management because all is involved throughout the product improved productivity people and process less waste lean mindset higher quality because at every iteration or sprint there is a inspect and adapt strong team now this is uh, another good point of uh, scrum because now uh, the layer of uh, resources like someone is uh, good at database someone is good at uh, middleware someone is good at ui so that, uh, this is not happen in uh, actually scrum all the team members are responsible for all the layers so more focused 
more decisive and self-managed. Better morale across the whole team. Engineering processes improved significantly. The critical features built at the quickest time at the minimum cost. This is what the advantage of or the benefit of Scrum. Now if we look at the challenges of Scrum, it's hard. It's hard uh, because most of the uh, because the Scrum is evolving right now, and uh, people are adapting Scrum, so it's hard. They are familiar with the other PM methodologies, and they have to adapt Scrum, and it's hard. It's hard because it needs proper training, mentoring, and understanding. It is must for each and every stakeholder, including the team member. It requires significant change, change across your project environment. It makes all dysfunction visible. Now this is very dangerous point. It makes all dysfunction visible. The reason is that in normal uh, waterfall model or uh, other long term models, uh, it's uh, normally a three month, six month or one year duration, the dysfunctions disclose near the end but in scrum there is a regular regular release every two weeks or four weeks makes this function visible faster scrum doesn't fix anything now this is another point scrum doesn't fix the team has to fix the dysfunctions and sometimes it's really horrible you may see things you don't want to see and it comes very fast in front of you because it's very transparent. So it demands, this is the reason it demands honesty and transparency. And this is another, uh, you can say a good point also. Bad products will deliver sooner, so there will be less loss. And doomed project will fail faster, again this is good, if you see. Otherwise in waterfall model you will come and Near the end of the uh, near the end of the project, you will come to know that now this fails, and lot of investment has already been done. So, in Scrum, Doom project will fail faster, so you may save lot of money out of it. So you can say it's an advantage as well. But it is bad because management thinks that Scrum failed. Partial adoption may be worse than none at all. So don't go for partial adoption of Scrum. Either adapt it fully or do not adapt it. Be uh, forewarned, many Scrum adoption fails and there can be reasons. Not The reason is not the Scrum normally, it's the implementation that is not done properly. I will look at this slide. I will explain in a short while. I am taking a case study for project X. Sprint considerations are two weeks sprint, two weeks iteration. Spring starts on Thursday. Planning meeting on Thursday morning. Sprint ends on second Wednesday morning with sprint review and retrospective meeting. Product owner makes sprint backlog ready for review by the second Tuesday EOD. Second Friday is the deadline for development work. Release happens every sprint iteration on first Friday of the previous or the previous iteration. Just go through these things. I will repeat them again in the diagram. Have a look at this. Now this is a two week sprint. It starts on Thursday and it ends on Wednesday, second Wednesday. So this is two weeks. 
planning meeting on Thursday morning. Planning meeting on Thursday morning. Where developer, uh, the development team gives commitment how much work they can take in this sprint. Sprint ends on second Wednesday morning with review retrospective meetings. Now, there are two things I have shown in red color and blue color. This blue color uh, represents that this is the work of previous iteration where this is the work of next iteration. That is in red. Product owner makes print backlog ready for review for the team by the second Tuesday EOD. So this is that point where product owner makes the sprint ready, next sprint ready for team review, Tuesday EOD. So this is the work of the next iteration that team has to do. That is the estimation of with the backlog refinement meeting. Backlog refinement is for the priority of the work that needs to be adjusted. So this is the work that team has to do uh, after the review and retrospective meeting. And based on this, the planning meeting will happen on the first Thursday. That is after the last Wednesday of previous. I think this is uh, understandable. Second Friday's deadline for the development work. See, this is the last development task. After that, there is only bug fixing. Release happens every sprint iteration on the first Friday of the previous iteration. So this is the release date for the previous iteration where on the first day of current iteration, QA will attend the planning meeting, but the remaining time for the release plan of the previous sprint and the next day is for the release of the previous sprint. Now, look at these two Friday. They are selected intelligently because there is always two days gap between Friday and Monday. If something goes wrong with the release, we will have a cushion of two days. If something is delayed in development, we will have cushion of two days over here. So uh, I am not saying that this will match with your scrum. Every scrum with every project has to be different because the environment is different. So this is a case study that I am taking to explain the collimating of Scrum. So I think uh, this is understandable by everyone in the room. Planning meeting goes here. Team will do the task breakup and will start development work development work, there can be many stories. Uh, if there are 10 resources, there can be 15 stories to work on. Development will do, uh, developer will do uh, the development work and send QA request as this story finishes. What QA will do after the release, they will start preparing test cases, start testing and filing bugs. Friday is the deadline, so from Monday and Tuesday only bug fixing is the task that developer will have. And testing, and after testing, is, if the testing is complete, regression uh, can be done by the QA. And then on Wednesday there will be a presentation meeting. QA will, uh, if QA is giving the 
presentation, they will prepare for the presentation for the review meeting and attend the retrospective meeting. Now, I have highlighted these three days here, these three days here. As far as initial look, this seems good. But while working in this project, I realized that we have a QA bandwidth in these three days. Because there is no story at QA for testing, they just need to prepare the test cases and get it reviewed by the product. So this is although less free because they start preparing test cases, but if the test cases is prepared in a day, they will have this complete bandwidth free. Even this, even this day also. So in some of this print, I find that almost you can say uh, the QA team is actually uh, having bandwidth. Because there is only 20 to 30 percent stories in QA and that is to on the Wednesday. Now look at the development side. QA request, QA request, QA request, QA request. So this is basically if you see most of these stories will be in QA on Thursday and Friday, around 70% of all these stories. Out of which 40% will be in QA on Thursday. So if you see, we have development bandwidth over here free. All those developers submitted their stories for QA will just do bug fixing and if the implementation is good, your development team is good, you will be having very less bug and Normally Mondays, Monday and Tuesday, development team will have lot of bandwidth free. Right? So these you can say are the challenges in the project X, where uh, the uh, Scrum Master or Project Manager can easily find out that these are the days where uh, QA resources are having bandwidth and these are the days where development resources are having the bandwidth. So what is the solution? Uh, another another point if you see there are uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday three days and this Monday and Tuesday the second Monday and Tuesday developer are having only one task. One task, not the sprint task, task to do work, one type of work only. How? Only the development work, when it finishes, send the QA request. Development work, when it finishes, send the QA request and bug fixing. And if the work is complete in half of the day, the remaining half will be free. So there, there, there are possibilities uh, of, again, uh, bandwidth available. Similar things will happen in QA. If you see testing, preparing test cases, testing, testing, testing. So these are the days. Uh, basically, uh, if you say this is uh, out of that maybe, but we already uh, completed, uh, normally QA already complete most of the test cases by two days, so this is again free and if testing completes in half of the day for a story and he is not having another story on QA, again there is a 
free bandwidth. So having just one type of work on a day can also uh, be a reason for free bandwidth. Let's have a look at the solution. So these are the challenges I have already discussed with you. Approximately 70% stories comes to QA on second Thursday and Friday. Makes QA having spare time on first Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So this, all these points I have already uh, discussed. Now, uh, this is one point, very less time for story requirement analysis and estimation increases risk on second Wednesday. So if you see, this is the most busy day for the teams. And very less time for the estimation because it needs analysis also. For proper estimation, one has to do proper analysis. And there is a review and retrospective, uh, retrospective meeting also. Now, collimating scrum. So what can be the solution? Product owner now makes sprint backlog ready for review by second Friday EOD, two days before. What? Product owner did earlier, it has to do two days before for the first sprint and then that will continue for the remaining sprints. So there is a workload initially for the product owner for one sprint to ready the sprint backlog two days before the normal time. And then this will continue for second Friday in every sprint. Sprint release to happen on first Tuesday of next iteration. This is delay of two days for the release. And adjust the resource work by assigning two to three tasks for a day with proper defined priorities. Now initial look, if you define two or three different type of work to a resource, uh, it seems that more work, but it actually doesn't. Working on one similar type of work, one same work for the whole day makes the uh, makes the uh, team member uh, very fatigued or puzzled. Context switching once or twice in a day actually refreshes your mind. So that will uh, result in better productivity also. If a developer is uh, working on development for the whole day on a single functionality instead, if he is having another task of bug fixing with on the same day in parallel with, with a properly defined priority, he can devote two to three hours to the bug fixing and then remaining hours in his story for development task. Let's see. Look at this. This is same. Planning meeting will happen on the same day. Forget about this view written over here. Just see, developer will start development on Friday. Monday, Tuesday, and same to the previous one, they start giving QA request from Wednesday and Thursday. And Friday is the deadline. The only thing changes is product makes next iteration sprint backlog ready by Friday. Now how things changes over here? On Monday, the development team's main task is requirement analysis for the next iteration. And bug fixing 
a bhakta there, then this should come in the top priority over here. The Tuesday will be for bug fixing, top priority, so that release should happen properly. And if developer is having time, then analysis and task breakup and estimation in the sprint backlog. This reduces lot of load that team member having on Wednesday. Now there is only review and retrospective meeting and just a backlog refinement meeting because print backlog has already been estimated. Now the start of the next iteration comes over here. We will have the planning of the next meeting and commit. Box of last iteration will be the second priority on the first Thursday because planning meeting of next iteration is on higher priority. But if you go to the Friday and Monday, the last, uh, the first Friday and the first Monday of the next iteration, you will see box of last iteration is on the top priority so that release should happen properly. And if developer gets time, start working on, the, on development of this iteration. And then again development, this is the dedicated day for development, 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 QA request, bug fixes. And if you see, on Friday, developer get some rest if their development work is complete and bug fixing is complete. So more uniformly dis, uh, distributed workload where there is less question of available bandwidth. If you see the QA team, they will attend planning meeting of the current iteration, prepare test cases, prepare test cases. With this, if you see the priority, this is the testing of previous sprints. After completion of planning meeting, they have to work on testing of previous sprints. Then, this is regression is on top priority. First, they do the regression, if gets time, prepare test cases. Then they will create the release plan on Monday if gets time prepare test cases. Then on the Tuesday they make a release and if gets time prepare test cases. So prepare test cases here in the second priority only to utilize the bandwidth. And normally in these three days they definitely get time at least in two days. So this is again a uh, better utilization of resources. Then dedicated days for preparing test cases and testing. So again they are having two tasks. Top priority prepare test cases and testing. Prepare test cases and testing. If they don't have anything to prepare as test case, just do the testing. And on Monday, because the sprint, next sprint is ready by Second Friday, I will just clear uh, the marks. Because the next sprint is ready by this Friday, they can do the requirement analysis of next sprint. And if gets time, continue testing on the current sprint. But on Tuesday, the priority gets changed. The priority for testing the current iteration is higher. And if they have some clarifications they can do in requirement analysis with the product. So if you see how these challenges are addressed, number of days, dev resource have only one task or two. These are the two days when development team member is having only one work to do. All rest of the days with proper priority they have two works. Uh, what I mean to say is this is the Friday is the day for bugs of last iteration, fixing bugs of last iteration. If there is no bug, do the development work. Similarly on Monday. So if you see 
the things are uh, more managed, streamlined, and more use, more and better use of the bandwidth of resources. Similarly, this happens with the QA. They have just one day that have only one work. Otherwise, all other days they have two work with proper priority. So bandwidth is uh, streamlined and uh, uh, more managed and more utilized. Here, earlier there were a lot of workload with the team, development team. But these two days work actually improves not only the workload, but also improves the analysis time. It gives a difference of three days total to think about the requirement. And developer member, team member will come out with more open questions to the products. So at the end, during the planning meeting of next iteration, the requirement will be much more clear, clearer than what in the previous example that I have taken. That was not collimated scrum. So all these challenges are addressed here. Earlier there were five days. Earlier there were five days. Now only one day. Where the uh, team members are having only one work. So uh, makes QA having spare time on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This has been resolved. Makes development team having some bandwidth on second Friday. This is again resolved. Almost 100% stories were in QA on the end of second Friday. Make development team having bandwidth on second Monday and Tuesday. This is resolved because now they are having a task of next sprint analysis and estimation. Very less time for story requirement analysis. This is again resolved because they are having now a span of three days to think about requirement and ask questions to product. So the requirement will, will be more clear on the day of planning, meeting, and commitment day. So I think I am clear uh, with my uh, my opinion on uh, how the Collimate uh, Scrum will be beneficial. Now, polymaking scrum benefits. More evenly distributed workload, this we have already seen. Sufficient time for requirement analysis and story estimation. Improved estimation. Better code. Reduced risk. Less bugs. Better utilization of resources that increase productivity. Overall improved efficiency and productivity. Conclusion. Address the issue of resource utilization and result in much smoother iteration with increased productivity. Changes are universal and are more likely to happen in Scrum because is fast, iterative, and release or functionality completes every two or four weeks or three weeks at a regular interval. There is always chances for improvement in any projects. This is universal. Scrum is more sensitive to its environment because it's fast. Similar processes implementation in different projects can be dangerous. This is very important. If you are having 5-7 projects, you cannot implement same processes in Scrum 
framework in all the projects. Processes should change depending on the requirement of Scrum framework for that particular project. This is very important. So let's uh, move to the question and answer round. I have lots of question over here. Let me have a look. What is print that I have answered in there in the presentation? Uh, basically, there are some questions that are related to Scrum and Agile. So, Scrum and Agile, I explained for the topic that I am taking in the webinar. So, I might be eliminating some of the questions. I will address some of the question in the remaining time in case if you can't, if, if I can't address please post those questions in the webinar page I will try to respond on as soon as possible but still I am taking some questions. Difference between PBI product backlog item and sprint backlog product backlog item product Normally, if you are having a product, there can be many functionality in a product. For each functionality, you can have many stories. Sprint contains stories. So, Sprint backlog will have stories. Product backlog will have epics or stories based on uh, functionality or uh, based on uh, product requirement. And sprint task is a task breakup of a single sprint story, user story. Once a developer or a team member commits for a story or a user story, he has to break up that story into tasks to watch the daily progress that is completing. If I couldn't complete a user story in a single sprint, that what then what will happen? Actually, if you are working in Scrum, you are the estimator. This is the first thing. You have to estimate whether you can complete that story in one sprint or not. Initially, during the planning meeting, during your analysis for the sprint, uh, user story. So. This is, uh, you are the person who took this story and you you are the person who estimated for it. So it should complete in uh, one sprint, ideally. But it not happens because of many reasons, because of risk. Risk should be communicated very early in the sprint. As soon as you start development work, you find that your story cannot be completed in one iteration. Discuss with your scrum master or manager immediately report it so that this can be communicated to the product so that as early as possible product must be uh, product should be aware of the delays or the risk so that further meetings can happen on that issue to resolve it either to break down the story into two parts or to do some of the overtime work that can be uh, uh, complemented in the next sprint. Suppose you are working overtime for Saturday, so you can take a off day in the next sprint when you are, or whenever you are having less workload. So there can be many possibilities, but they should be communicated well in advance. If you are communicating at the last day of the sprint that I cannot complete this story, you will be in trouble. Believe me, you will be in trouble because Scrum is so transparent. You cannot come at the last moment that I cannot complete this task in, in this iteration. 
they should come very much early in the iteration or during the analysis. In, before the planning meeting, well and good. Within the planning meeting, meeting, you can break up your stories into two parts or you can communicate that it is not possible to complete in one iteration. I will need two iterations to complete this story. Uh, this was the question from Nirakar. Okay. Uh, also, uh, this is from Bridge. Also, can you explain the difference between product owner and scrum master? I will not go in much detail here just to explain you the concept. Scrum master you can imagine as a project manager in this scrum environment. But basically he is responsible for the smooth operation of scrum and also responsible for removing any of the impediments that comes in this uh, iteration or sprint so that the team can work smoothly. So he is not this uh, person to whom the team reports. He is the person who supports the team so that work should happen smoothly. Whereas product owner is responsible for the product, for the functionalities or the output that is required from this project. So he is the person who creates the requirements who creates the acceptance criteria. So I am not going in detail. So this is the difference that I am explaining. Manish has asked, can the end date or sprint backlog item list change during the sprint? It should not change. It should not change or it must not change. If you are changing sprint backlog items during the sprint, you will never able to make release in time. Believe me. Any new requirement must come in next iteration sprint backlog. or end date should not be changed because it affects next iteration planning or release planning and then eventually product planning. So they have to be fixed. What are the uh, similarities and differences as well as advantage, disadvantage between classic waterfall model, agile scrum? I think I have explained it in uh, quite detail during the presentation. Nikhil. Uh, Ram, how much flexible the Agile for government project? Uh, I don't think it matters whether the project is with government or with individual or with small organization or with big organization. You have to follow the spring framework and the project must fit in the spring framework. This is the most important. Manish has asked another question, where does the client representative fit into the scrum team? Client representative is the person who is known as product owner here. A client is interacting with the team which is always good for the scrum framework. So product ownership must be taken by or should be taken by client representative because he is the responsible person then. If, it, if, if uh, somehow client cannot make the representative, your team product owner must be in direct interaction with the client with almost uh, written permission in all the functionalities from the client.
Uh, Dinesh has asked one question, how to estimate for the entire project at the beginning if requirements are changed every week? Dinesh, I think I have answered in uh, one of the questions answered just now. Requirement should not change within the iteration. Scrum is useful when requirements are not clear. This is a product visualization, not the sprint visualization. For the sprint, for a particular sprint, the product's requirement must be very much clear with all the key acceptance or acceptance criteria because product is responsible for the output. The team is not responsible. Team is responsible for the development work. What product has asked should be completed. If it is not completed, then team is responsible. But if product is not giving you clear requirement, that is not the fault of the developer. The requirement must be very much clear for a, a particular sprint. Otherwise, Scrum, there are very high chances that Scrum implementation may fail or your customer will not be happy throughout your project. Again, I am repeating this is very important question that requirement is uncertain, lot of R&D work, this is a product view, functionality view, the bigger picture. But product is responsible for what he wants for that particular sprint. This must be clear before the sprint is ready for team review. And if this is clear, your iteration will go well and the product will get what he wants. After that, product will decide whether this is required or not. This is the uncertainty in product view. So this should be clear in everyone's mind. Otherwise your scrum will always be in trouble. Uh, what is the ratio of QA member in the team? This is a question by Dinesh. Uh, Dinesh. Ideally, in small team, uh, small team QA might not be required because it's a cross-functional team. But it depends on the requirement. If uh, the project is large enough and needs a manual testing, you should have a QA member. So ideal ratio that works. Uh, there is no fixed ratio, but good thing is at least one QA resource between uh, uh, two developers resources in a team of at least 10 members and there are other variables to affect these things. If you have QA automation this may affect. So there are lots of factors within project that affects this ratio. So it all depends on that particular project and the scrum implementation in that project. Another question from Anubhav I have is, who owns the scrum, who decides the sprint duration and what is the maximum duration, number of days of the sprint? So as such, there is no limit uh, for the number of days of the sprint. But ideally, it should be two to four weeks. Who, who owns the scrum? is a framework and everyone is responsible. Who decides the sprint duration? That is decided by the product. Maybe with the engineering team. Because product should be uh, experienced enough to decide how much functionality breakup product can do. A 40 hour functionality breakup, 80 hour functionality breakup, 40 hour means one week duration, 80 hours means two weeks duration. So uh, basically product with Scrum Master or maybe with the management.
So that means if the developer has to work only for eight days, uh, not eight days, ten days, Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday. Nikhil, if I have mentioned somewhere eight days, it might be by uh, mistake. The sprint is for ten days, two weeks, one week Monday to Friday five days, another week Monday to Friday five days, total ten days. Another good question from Himanshu Gyani. When, uh, when there is a back-to-back -back plan for developer and tech QA testing, how do we control the slippage in better con controlled way? Because the bug fixing is not finished on the set date, dependent tasks like testing, etc. will get delayed. Normally, one QA resource will be working on multiple stories. This is one thing. Another thing is that everyone is having uh, more than one work type. So if he is waiting for something, he can uh, do or he can take up the second priority work. So that's why I call it more controlled, more streamlined and more uh, basically uh, utilization of bandwidth. Uh, Manish Savant has asked a question, why is it called collimated scrum? How is this methodology different from the regular scrum? I am not saying it is different from regular scrum. Uh, I just overlapped uh, previous and next iteration workload with the current iteration that is collimating the scrum. So uh, you can say this is the word given by me for this scrum, collimating the scrum for the better utilization. Uh, another question that I have is, isn't it micromanaging the task? How about if there are any risks? What about the risk management plan? Okay. Uh, this question is asked by uh, Buddhaditya Saha. Uh, micromanagement depends. This is not micromanagement because we have self-managed resources where we have already defined the priorities, well-defined priorities. So there is no need to micromanage. Second thing is if something is dysfunction or not properly happening, it automatically reflects because it is very transparent in every day's meeting Scrum master or other team members easily can predict or can uh, uh, able to know that things are not going well with this particular resource. And normally, believe me, every every resource will become self management uh, self managed if Scrum is implemented properly. So uh, no need to do the micromanagement. Things will happen automatically. If not happens, continuously there is a problem, discuss with the resource. If he is not able to make it, change his team, take a better resource. This has to happen properly. This is what the scrum is. Risk management, uh, yeah, I have already told, if there is a risk, it should be communicated well in advance with proper language so that client is able to understand the risk so that client can make necessary actions on that risk. If you are communicating the risk at the end of the iteration, it is not acceptable at all. Why you are uh, 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 communicating your risk at the end of the iteration when you know on the first development day that this functionality is uh, not possible in this technology and I have to do some R&D. Just communicate it with the, uh, on the same day when you come to know to the product. Keep your scrum manager, scrum master in the CC. And this should go well. 
But if you are communicating at the end of the iteration that I am not able to complete this functionality because I want R&D, at the end of the iteration it is not acceptable. Even before the planning meeting, in your task breakup of your user story, you should your product owner, your client is uh, actually understand your problem. They are well educated people. Sachin uh, has asked, what does this term collimating signify in the context of Scrum? Sachin, uh, this is the term you won't find on internet because this is the term given by me. I have done many implementation collimating Scrums and I find it very useful while working in Scrum. Then another question uh, from Jaya uh, Maskati. Is Scrum is more applicable to product development or the smaller project? Scrum is applicable. Uh, Scrum applicate, applicability is not dependent on uh, uh, product or smaller project. See, if you uh, uh, want to have a release every two weeks, suppose there is a website and new func functionality is required every two weeks, every four weeks, you have to adapt Scrum. Now it's become a necessity. How? You see Google, you see lot of sites, daily you use daily lot of sites. You see every 15 days or every month, you see new functionalities coming up. They are using Scrum. Most of them are using Scrum. But for very small project, definitely there is no need of Scrum. If your project is just of two weeks or four weeks or two months, you can just plan a single iteration for that and complete it. Uh, Byron Shah uh, has asked one question, how over backup as each resource has less bandwidth to do the task? If resources fall sick, for a week or Scrum Master not available for Scrum meeting. Scrum Master doesn't affect teamwork. Scrum Master is to look after impediment. So uh, this is uh, one issue and another is basically bandwidth is too uh, uh, less available for resources and if some resources stick. So uh, if it happens regularly, what you can plan is just take 90% of your workload, not 100% so that some resource will be available to complete uh, the work of uh, the resource who is sick. Or you can plan for weekend work that you can uh, complement uh, on some, uh, provide some pump of home on uh, another iteration when the workload is less with the uh, that particular resource. Uh, Parag has asked one question, how much is the involvement of the client? Client invo involvement is not. Client means I am talking about product owner. Most, in most cases, your client is the product owner. So its interaction is must. Even if the product owner is from your team, he must be directly and daily up, uh, provide updates to the client and take clients uh, response on those because if something is going wrong wrong product owner is responsible for the uh, product and he should uh, uh, report to the client and if client is the product owner then he is the responsible but continuous interaction is a must otherwise there are high chances of failure of, of scrum implementation Uh, Vilal has asked a question, if we have big project for that need 15 developers, then how we define the uh, sprint? 
So I think up to uh, 10, 15 or 20 resources, uh, there is no problem. Uh, with more resources, it, we might need to break up this from uh, based on the uh, different functionalities or different initiatives in each of the product. So uh, that might happen. That is Scrum of Scrum and managing multiple Scrums for a product. Uh, Shampa Ganguly has asked, is story point estimation in Agile is effective? It is very, very much effective and required. Story point est estimation is required. It should happen to find out the velocity because velocity is very useful for the new initiatives that comes in the product. To estimate the initiative, how much sprint that initiative may take. So it's required for the product owner. Uh, where, the, where is the demo to client task list at the end of the sprint, Rajiv? Uh, demo to client is basically happens in review meeting. So I think I have done with most of the questions. If there is some remaining, please put in the product page, uh, uh, this uh, webinar page. I um, I reply as soon as possible. So I've done from my side. All right. Uh Thanks, Mr. Hemant Kumar Duga, for your session on Collimate Scrum Agile Project Management for Improved Efficiency. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all the participants for their support in making this webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on techgeek.com by tomorrow. Thank you all. Thank you.